What's up, YouTube, and welcome to your next. G um, I I'm sorry. Uh, I actually got bit earlier by the strangest guy I've ever met. You heard that right. He bit me, and it's really been bugging me. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, welcome to your next geek trip. So Zombies Mode, or originally Nazi Zombies, has been a staple of Call of Duty since World at War came out in 2008. But there's something different this time around. Traditionally, it's only been Treyarch who took the mantle of Zombie when it was their turn to make the next Call of Duty. But it looks like Infinity Ward has decided to come in on it. Did they do a good job? Let's find... Find... <sighs> <sighs> I want to be straight up with everyone and let you know I haven't played Zombies mode since the first Black Ops. I know, I'm horrible for that, but I've just had so many other games I've wanted to spend $60 on and at that point, Zombies would pretty much be the only reason I'd get it. So keep in mind that I mostly know the new additions, but I didn't play the last maps in Black Ops 3 myself. Of course, with that said, I'd like to judge it on its own merits rather than the most new and interesting parts of itself. So the level design is honestly outstanding. Either you like the setting or you don't. But the inclusion of the 80s theme allowed for the extremely diverse landscapes. From the winter slopes of Polar Peak to an arcade, most can definitely appreciate it. It's extremely colorful while still capable of reliving a dark and gloomy atmosphere. Don't get me wrong. Some people are right when they say it isn't nearly as scary as other maps, but to be honest, is it exactly scary anyway? And if so, I don't think the setting changes at all that much. Sure, there are times when you can get a laugh in, like when you catch a zombie doing something in the disco floor, but that's, that only happens in the arcade. All in all, this map is gorgeous. From sprawling, massive areas to tight underground corridors, there's definitely something here for everyone. As far as power-ups, there's a new addition that can get you out of sticky situations, and that's cards. They're divided into two groups, fake cards and fortune cards. You can carry a total of five during a game. The fake cards are earned by simply leveling up, while fortune cards are earned through opening crates with keys earned through gameplay. Each of them have their own style of bonus. Fate cards essentially gives you a nice power that lasts a good while, like one gives you regenerating grenades, yet another catches zombies on fire when they hit you. Fortune cards tend to give really good bonuses like getting double the cash per kill, but these have strict time limits, usually around 30 seconds. You can use the cards by powering up the bar at the bottom right of the screen. Each card can be used once, but you can pay to have them reset. This new map also adds a new type of currency. Tickets. These are earned as drops or playing arcade games. Leaving a zombie alive at the end of a round to gain a good amount of tickets isn't hard. The tickets can be redeemed for anything from guns to grenades. There's even a bag that gives all of your guns full ammo, but be wary, you can only use that once. They also have coin machines where you can place different colored coins in to get things like turrets. Uh, the coins are dropped by zombies and it takes three to produce anything. The color also corresponds to what you'll be getting based on where you place it. There's also the typical ones like colas, which are now candies, tons of traps, and the pack-a-bunch machine. All in all, there's tons of layers to keep you coming back again and again. Quarterback, blind, blind. <laughs> the gameplay itself is as entertaining as ever. Zombies are their usual selves with glowing yellow eyes and come in a few varieties. There's walkers, runners, crawlers, fast crawlers, hulking giants to shoot laser beams. Oh, and there's clowns. Yep, clowns. Apparently it's time to destroy another generation's love they otherwise may have had for them. Oh well, I guess. Levels start out the same as they always have. You get a pistol, and you work your way up to beastly guns that definitely didn't exist in the 80s or today for that matter. <laughs> then again, there's also alien saucers running around, so I guess they get a slide on that. 
The action gets quite intense, and the constant progression through opening doors and gaining new weapons via the spinning wheel or creating wonder weapons is really fun to say the least. The main downside is the lack of player participation via chatting, which you can get under anyone's skin. It's a very team-based game, people. We need to talk. But of course, this isn't the developer's fault. With all of this said, there were a couple things that I really wasn't too happy about. For one, I think it's time to add more than just boss types to add that extra oomph I feel the game has been missing. That, and the need for more than one freaking map upon release. Personally, I'd like to see at least two or three. Maps are tough, for sure. I have no doubt they take a ton of time with developers, but adding one or two more would help sell the game much easier. Carpenter. All in all, I thoroughly enjoyed what Infinity War did to the game. Sure, they may have taken the easy way out, but they gave many what they wanted. A new zombie map with more layers than ever. Oh, and they added back PhD Flopper. Well, minus the flop part. But what more could we ask for? Today, I'm going to be giving the new zombies mode an 8 out of 10. So yeah, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down and let me know why. Also, please subscribe. I have some really awesome videos coming for you guys. Have a great day.